Hello, welcome to online class uh, of Physics 103, okay, which is Physics for Life Sciences 1. And uh, I am Dr. Chiranjibi Lamsa, you can call me GB, okay, in short, you can call me GB. So in this class, we'll be talking about mainly the a branch of physics, which deals with uh, motion of object, okay. So that branch is called mechanics, okay. A mechanics is the branch of physics that is study the motion of object or it is the study of moving object, okay? Suppose you have an object here, it moves, right? So the study of this kind of motion is mechanics, okay? So any object, what is an object by the way? Uh, an object is collection of matter, okay? An object is collection of matter. So what is matter? So you might have heard of different phases of matter, right? Solid, right? You know what solid is, you know what liquid is, you know what gas is. And there is another state, the fourth state of matter, which we call plasma. You might have heard of plasma. Uh, I don't know, but uh, I can show you what plasma is. Okay, look at this uh, uh, picture here. So is this, this is the fire, right? Is, is fire a gas, liquid, or solid? So the fire is none of them. In fact, uh, the fire is plasma, okay? That's what I'm trying to uh, show you here. All right. So now um, in mechanics, uh, we'll start with a measurement, okay? The first chapter of mechanics is measurement, okay? So in the measurement, I start with a um, very um, fundamental uh, thing, which is a physical quantity. So what is a physical quantity? A physical quantity is the property of an object, okay? Any object that can be measured, okay? The property that can be measured, suppose, uh, temperature, right? Suppose you talk about temperature. Suppose we have an object here, object is A, this is at 200 degree Fahrenheit. So you have another object here, let's say B, let's say this has 100 degree Fahrenheit, right? Which one is hotter? This is hot, this is cold, right? Okay, if they are connected, if they are in, in touch, Okay, if they are in contact rather, what happens? The heat flows from A to B, okay? Uh, the object with high temperature to the object at low temperature, okay? The heat will transfer from A to B, meaning the, the temperature will go down as the heat transfer from here to here. Let's say the temperature becomes 190 degree and this temperature might become 110, I don't know. It's, the temperature of this guy goes on decreasing and temperature of B goes on increasing, okay? So then what is, the, what is temperature then? Temperature is that kind of property, okay? Temperature is that kind of physical quantity rather, which determines the direction of flow of heat, okay? Okay, meaning the heat always flow from, it always flows from high temperature to low temperature, okay? So it is that property, what kind of property? Which determines the direction of flow, okay? That property is temperature, meaning physical quantity is the property that can be measured, okay? Temperature is such a property that determines the direction of flow, meaning it always flow from high to low temperature, okay? So, so there are many, many such physical quantities in mechanics, okay? So one of them is temperature, all right? So I hope you understand. So when you talk about physical quantity, you have to, uh, in the case of temperature, as you said, in the case uh, 200 Fahrenheit, right? So this is N, this is U, okay? It always, when you express your physical quantity, you have to always express in N and U. N is number, 
you is unit. You should never, never, never forget your unit. Okay. So any physical quantities have two parts. One is n, the other one is u. n is the number, u is the unit. Okay. So we measure each physical quantity by its own unit. Okay. That's what I meant. So, yeah. So there are many, uh, many systems of unit. Okay. So mainly we have two major system of unit. Okay. One is English system that you are very familiar with, I know, because this is used only in the United States. And that is, there is another system which is called metric system. The metric system is used throughout the world, plus United States also, but we mainly use English system, okay? But the thing is, uh, continued use of English system in USA presents problem in the international trade, right? So this is one of the examples. So we have been using English system, but uh, that creates problem because except US, entire world is using metric system. That's why we need to start using a metric system as well, okay? Nowadays, more and more metric systems are being used, okay? What is metric system? Metric system, the system of unit which was first adopted in the late 1700. Okay, so that's the metric system. We'll talk about that later, but this is just the, um, you know, uh, when the metric system began. Now we use the modernized version of uh, the metric system, which we call the uh, international system of unit. Okay, in short, we can call it SI unit, okay? So how do we get this SI from international system unit? S and I, that's how we get the SI unit, okay? It's the acronym, but how come they flip the order? Shouldn't it be IS, right? This is the French phrase that we got the SI from, okay? So in French, we have S and I here. So I don't know how to speak French, but I can show you how it is spoken, okay? Here we go. So as you know, we have an uh, English system of unit, uh, which is also called FPS, and uh, we have a SI system of unit, which is also called MKS. So why is the English uh, system called FPS? Because uh, I'm going to tell you about that. And also why is the SI system called MKS? I'm going to uh, explain that too, okay? So here we have listed four different quantities, length, force, time, and mass. What is the unit of length? Length is foot. What is the unit of force? Pound. What is the unit of time? Second. What is the unit of mass? Slog, right? Then similarly, in the SI system, what is the unit of length? Meter. What is the unit of force? Newton. What is the unit of time? Second. What is the unit of mass? Kilogram, okay? I'm sure you guys have heard of uh, kilogram, second, meter, right? So what is Newton? Uh, Newton is a unit of force in the SI system, okay? So, and how about slog? Have you guys heard of slog? You might not have heard of slog because this is, uh, this might be new to you and this is unit of mass, okay? So, um, all right, so uh, one slog, uh, one slog is equal to 14.593 kilogram. Okay, that's the conversion factor here. One slog equal to 14.593 uh, uh, kilogram. So one second, one second, there is no conversion. They're exactly the same. What is the unit conversion between one pound and Newton? One pound and Newton is one pound equals 4.44822 Newton. And one foot equals 0. 3048 meter. Okay, this is the conversion between FPS and SI system. Okay, these are the conversion. So when I say uh, 4.44822 Newton equals one pound, so how do you convert that to uh, a more easier term? So you might have heard of 9.8, right? Somewhere in the book, in, in high school, maybe. But um, if you haven't heard of it, so don't worry, we'll talk about that later. But 9.8 Newton is equals 2.2 pound, which is equivalent to one kg. 
okay? So you might have heard of the one kilogram, which is equal to 2.2 pound. Kilogram is mass, this is force, right? So that's why you cannot write equal, but you can say equivalent, okay, like that. So this is the conversion between Newton and pound, okay? So this is easier one. So you can say either this conversion here, which is this, right? This is the one of the conversion. And you can also rewrite this guy as this. For me, this is easier, okay? All right, here we'll be talking about matrix uh, prefixes, prefixes, okay? So let's say, so you, everybody has cell phone, smartphone, right? So what is the storage of your cell phone? Maybe 64 GB, okay, 128 GB, I don't know, or 32 GB, or 16 GB. You might have, you might have heard of GB, right? Gigabyte, okay? So, so this gigabyte, so this is the prefix, right? I'm talking about the prefix. Now, what is this giga? What is this giga? Uh, what, what is the meaning of this giga, okay? So giga is the prefix, okay? And uh, this uh, giga has the symbol big G and the meaning of giga is billion, okay? Which is 10 to the nine. So how do you convert your byte to gigabyte in this example? So you have 128 gigabyte, then you have to multiply that by this many, which is 10 to the negative nine to convert to byte. Okay, this is, this is what I'm saying. Similarly, you have another prefix here, megabyte, which, is, which has a symbol M, which the meaning is million, and it's 10 to the six, obviously. It means you have six zeros here, right? Multiply by this. So 10 to the six can also be written as one, two, three, four, five, six zeros, okay? So this is a mega. And similarly, you can have kilo, okay? Kilo is a thousand, which is 10 to the three. This is how you write thousand, okay? So these all are multiplication, okay? If you have prefix like giga, mega, kilo, then you have to multiply, okay? If you have uh see the blue line here so if you have the prefix prefixes below this blue line then there's a desi the symbol is d the meaning is tenth tenth right meaning you have to divide by 10 so 10 to the negative one meaning one over 10 okay which can be also written as 0 0.1 okay so you just divide here Underneath you divide, here you multiply, okay? You have different prefixes here. So giga, mega, kilo, deci, centi, milli, micro, nano. Okay, micro, the symbol of micro is a little different, which is, uh, this is mu, this is Greek letter, okay? Mu, so other are obvious, like D, C, M, micro, which is mu and, and nano, okay? So these are the SI prefixes. Now uh, in this slide, we'll be talking about changing unit. How do you change unit from one system of unit to other system of unit? Okay, so as you know, we already had, we talked about two system of unit, one the English system, the other one is SI system, right? Okay, suppose you know the English system, which is very, uh, uh, which is more likely because we are in the United States, then how do you change that English to uh, SI, okay? So that kind of thing. How do you change one system of unit to other uh, system of unit, okay? So this is very important, okay? So while solving problem, you should be able to change the unit, okay? So um, because while solving problem, you have to always do the problem in one system of unit, like here, right? Suppose you are given a problem. Um, um, in uh, English system, right? But one of them is in kg, let's say. Instead of slug, you have kilogram. You have a numerical problem. So you are given foot, pound, second in the problem, but one of them, one of them is kg. So they mix. 
see FPS mixed with SI, right? No good. So either you have to change all three to SI or you have to change your kilogram to slug. Okay, so this is called unit consistency. Unit consistency. This is very important in problem solving, okay? Don't mix apple and oranges, no good, okay? So that's what you should uh, do. So it means you, you should be able to change unit from one system of unit to the other system of unit. Okay, in this case, uh, we change the unit uh, using a rule called chain link conversion rule. Okay, chain link. So let's say there is an example here, how many seconds are there in two minutes? Okay, so you are given minutes, but you are supposed to find in second, okay? So you have N1, U1, which is two minutes, okay? N1 is two, U1 is M, minute, right? You can write M I N. okay, minutes. Then you have to change this minute to second, okay? Minute to second. So what is, first of all, what you need, what you need to know is the conversion between minute and second. What is the conversion? One minute equals 60 seconds, right? Okay. So this can be written in two ways. So if you, if you want, if you divide by 60, what do you get? In this case, if you divide both sides by 60, what do you get? 60 second, 60 second. You got one here, right? If you, okay. So rather, if you divide both side by one minute, what do you get? One minute, one minute. Okay, so this is one. So meaning you can get one in two ways. So one equals, you have one minute over 60 seconds. Also, one equals 60 second over one minute. They are same thing, okay? Now, your goal is to get rid of minute and get second, right? Okay? Now, for that, what you do is you start with two minute, okay? This is what you begin with. You change it to second, okay? So two minute. This can be written as two times one minute two times one, right? But remember this one can be written as this way and this way, okay? I forgot minute here, times one, okay? Anything can be multiplied by one and remains same, right? So you can do that. But one here is either this or this, okay? Both are true, but you have to use the appropriate one. So what is your goal? You have to get rid of minute and uh, you have to get the second, right? Get rid of minutes, that's your goal. So now we, which one do you wanna write? You wanna write this one or this one? So that you get rid of this one, this minute, okay? You have one here underneath, right? So which one you wanna write here? This or this? Probably this, right? Because you have 60, get, erase this one and write 60 S over one minute. Now this minute and minute cancel out, then you're left with 120 second, okay? So that's how you do it. So make sure you cancel the, the unit that you don't need, okay? In this case, you don't need minute, you need second. That's why you need to get rid of minute. So if you want to somehow get rid of second, then you have to choose this, remember? The second is on the bottom, okay? But in our case, we have to get rid of minute. That's why we chose this conversion factor so that minute and minute cancel out. You got rid of minute. So you got, you got 60 times two equals 120 second. Okay, hope this makes sense. Let's do another uh, problem here. So which is, this is example two. This is the interstate speed limit, okay? 
So suppose you are driving in the interstate highway. So the speed limit of the highway is 65 miles per hour. Now your goal is to change this unit. So this is obviously English system of unit, right? And you wanna change this to SI system of unit, meter per second, SI. How do you do that? First of all, you need to have the conversion factor, okay? So I have given you the conversion factor. So you are given miles here, right? So miles to feet. First of all, you change your miles to feet. Then you change your feet to meter. See, this is a two-step process. This is how you got meter here, okay? Then you change your hour to second. Okay, this is one step process. Hour to second is one step process, but miles to meter is two step process, meaning first change your mile to feet, then feet to meter. Okay, that's what I mean. All right, let's, uh, let's do it. So your speed is, speed is 65 miles per hour, right? So you need to change two quantities here, miles and hour, okay? So that's why you have to multiply by two, one here. Multiply, just multiply, you never have to divide. So this hour is in the denominator, it doesn't, it doesn't mean that you have to divide, okay? Just multiply, it's that simple. Multiply by one in both, two, we have, because you have to change your miles and you have to change your hour. That's why multiply by one, two ones. One for this, one for hour, okay? Just multiply, you don't have to divide, okay? So now, first of all, let's change your miles to feet. So let's do that, 65 miles to feet. How do you do miles to feet? Remember, do you have to have feet on the top or miles on the top, like in the previous problem? Remember, your one equals one mile, over five to eight zero feet, right? Or this can be written as five to eight zero feet over one mile. Which one you wanna choose? Because you have one here. Both of them are one, okay? So your goal is to change your mile to feet, meaning you have to get rid of mile, meaning you have to choose this one so that you can cancel, remember? 65, miles per hour, this one is this guy here, which is 50 a, 50 to 80 feet uh, divided by one mile, right? Okay, now this one is for hour, okay? So similarly, you have uh, one equals two different thing for hour also, which is this, and that, right? So do you wanna write one hour over this second or this second over one hour? Which one do you want? Because you wanna get rid of hour, right? Meaning you have to have hour on the top. So meaning you have to have one hour on the top, then you have this many seconds on the bottom, three, six, zero, zero second. Does it make sense? Okay. So this mile and mile cancel out, hour and hour cancel out. So you are, you are you are left with feet over second. Look at that, that's cool, right? So if you multiply these two and divide by that, then you end up getting 95 feet per second, okay? Multiply these two guys and divide by this, you end up getting this. Now one step is done. Now you're further, you have to, multi you have to uh, change your feet to meter using this. On the bottom, you don't have to do anything because you already got what you want, right? This is second, you want second, you got second, done. Then feet, you have to change your meter to feet, feet to meter rather, okay? So then what do you do? You have to further multiply feet over second. What do you do? You do you want to do meter on the top or feet on the top? Because you want to get it of feet. So feet on the bottom, right? So that you can get it of feet. So one meter over, one meter over 3.281 feet. See, this feet and feet cancel out. Then you are left with, if you, if you divide 95 by this, what do you get? 
29 meter per second. That's how you do it. Meaning this month's 65 mile per hour equals 29 meter per second. That's how you do the conversion. Okay. I hope it makes sense. Okay. So we already learned about the fundamental quantity, right? So fundamental quantities, you have length. Length. So you can write this as L. Okay. Then you have time. Time, you can write time as T. And you can write mass as M, okay? You have three fundamental quantities. Now, many other quantities uh, can be written in terms of this uh, fundamental quantity, okay? Now, what I'm going to show here is uh, uh, teach you about, about dimensional analysis. What is dimensional analysis? So suppose you have you are given a formula. Okay. So now we are asked to check whether this formula is correct or not. Okay, this is right or wrong. Is this right or wrong? This is what you need to figure out. So so to figure out, you can use dimensional analysis. Okay, so what is dimensional analysis? So there is an equal sign, remember? Equal sign meaning this guy equal to that guy. Okay, left-hand side equal to right-hand side. If left-hand side is orange, the right-hand side is orange. If left-hand side is apple, right-hand side is apple. Okay, that's the meaning of equal sign here. All right, now X is displacement, okay? meaning length, right? This is length, x is length. So one over two, it doesn't have unit. What is v? v is velocity. Velocity, velocity is uh, length over time. Length over time, right? So you can write this guy as L over T, like that, okay? So length is written as L. What is T? T is T square. So T is T, so it is T square, okay? Now let's write this down. So X is just L, right? As you know, right? Then one over two does not have unit. Then what is V? V is L over T. Look at that, L over T. This is my V, okay? V is L over T. Then T square is T square here. Now, so what do you, what do you got on the left-hand side? Left-hand side, you have L. What do you got on the right-hand side? You have L over T and T square. So what happens is this T and this T cancel out. Then what are you left with? You are left with uh, L times T, right? Which is LT. Your right-hand side, you have LT. Left-hand side, you have L. Meaning if this is orange, this is apple. No good. That's why this formula is incorrect. So even though you don't know anything about this formula, you can simply check whether this formula is correct or incorrect by using the analysis that we call dimensional analysis, okay? So meaning if the formula is correct, that should be equal to that. Left-hand side should be equal to right-hand side. Orange should be equal to orange, not the apple, okay? This is always true. No matter what kind of problem you take, this is always true. And if any formula can be tested by using so-called dimensional analysis. Let's check another uh, formula. So suppose you are given this formula. Is this formula dimensionally correct? I'm not saying it is correct. Is this dimensionally correct? Okay. So what is L, what is X? X is L again, right? What is B? B is L over T velocity, right? What is T? T is time. Just plug this in. X, you have L, this L goes in here. Then B, L over T, there. Then T, you have T. So these two cancel out, right? These two cancel out, then you are left with L on the right, L on the left. So is this dimensionally correct? Yes. But the, is this formula correct? Not dimensionally, remember? 
I'm not saying dimensionally here. Maybe, okay. Why did I say maybe? Because who knows, there might be some um, scaling factor here, maybe four here, okay? Because four does not have unit. So you cannot use dimension in that case. So this formula is correct. I know this is correct because you know it high school, but if you, if this, if this is your first time seeing this formula, then you cannot say this is correct. But you can say this is dimensionally correct. Okay, so that's the power of dimensional analysis. All right, so in this, now in this uh, chapter, we'll be a little bit talking about uh, trigonometry. So we don't need too much, but uh, very basic of trigonometry. So you might have done it in high school, but if you haven't done it, so don't panic, it's very easy. I'm going to go through it, okay? So suppose you have a triangle here. This is a right triangle. So right triangle, what is right triangle? Right triangle. Right triangle is the triangle having one of them 90 degrees. The angle of, one of the angles of the right triangle is 90 degrees, right? This is the reference angle, which is theta. And we have different Name for three sides of the right triangle. What is the different, what are the names? You have, uh, this is called perpendicular. Perpendicular, or you can say opposite side, right? Opposite to this guy, that's the meaning. And uh, this is called adjacent side. This, uh, this side is called adjacent. You can sometimes we call base or adjacent. Why do you call it adjacent? Because this, this is adjacent to theta. And the longest side, this is called hypotenuse, okay? So hypotenuse, this is uh, the longest side of the, which is opposite to 90 degree, okay? These are the three different sides of uh, uh, the right triangle. Now, in this right triangle, we can define uh, trigonometric quantities, okay? So what are the trigonometric quantities? There are six of, them, six of them, right? So sine, cosine, tangent, and you have three more, right? So you know them, I guess. So what is, how do you define your sine theta from this right triangle? Your, your theta is this, take the sine of that theta, this angle theta. Then what is the sine of that angle theta? So it is opposite over hypotenuse, okay? So sine theta, right? Opposite, what is the opposite? This is opposite, then hypotenuse. That's your sine theta, okay? Opposite is H zero, hypotenuse is H. That's the definition of sine theta. Similarly, what is the definition of cosine theta? Adjacent over hypotenuse, okay? Adjacent meaning this guy over this. That's the cosine theta. Then similarly, what is the definition of tangent of theta? opposite over adjacent. Maybe you might have heard this formula, okay? So katoa. So mean sine is opposite over hypotenuse, C is adjacent over hypotenuse, and tangent is opposite over adjacent, right? You might have heard this formula in high school. If not, you can, you know, use this formula. Uh, okay, so there are the, th these are three quantities and you have three more quantities which are just reciprocal of this, this three, okay? Sine, they have cosec, uh, cosecant, right? You have a secant and you have cotangent, right? They are just reciprocal, okay? But uh, mainly we'll be using these three, okay? Sine, cosine, and tangent. You don't have to even know about those all, uh, those other three. All right, let's do a problem here. So on a sunny day, a tall building cast a shadow that is 67.2 meter long, okay? You see the tall building and you have the shadow of the building, which is this, right? It's the shadow, which is 67.2 meter long. 
the angle between the sun's rays, this is the sun ray coming downward like this, the angle between the sun ray and the ground, this angle is 50 degrees. As shown in figure, then determine the height of the building. How do you determine the height of the building? So see, without measuring the height, you can, you can look at the shadow and measure the angle. So length of the shadow and the angle gives you the height of the building. That's cool, right? Let's do that. How do you do that? So as we learned in the previous slide, we have tangent of theta equals HO opposite over adjacent, right? Okay, what is, what is the tangent of theta? Tangent of 50, right? As you can see here, this is 50. What is H0? We don't know. That's the thing we need to figure out. HA, 67.2, look at that. Okay, meter, right? So then H0 is, H0 is uh, multiply both sides by 67.2. What do you get? 67.2 gives you H0, right? So 67.2 times tangent of 50, okay? So if you do that, if you do the calculation, you end up getting 80.1 meter, okay? First find the tangent of 50 degrees, then multiply that by 67.2. And what is the unit? Uh, meter, right? So I forgot to write this guy here. Okay. All right, so this is the meter. Never forget to write the unit, okay? You have to always remember N and U, N, U, okay? It always comes together. All right, so in the previous, slide we know what is your sine theta right sine theta is opposite over hypotenuse right then how do you find the inverse sine inverse sine is uh, inverse sine is inverse sine is sine inverse h0 over h which is equal to theta okay so this as if this goes to the other side here and becomes inverse, right? Theta equals inverse sine this over that. That's what I meant here, okay? So theta equals inverse sine h zero over h and theta also can be found by using this formula as inverse cosine also inverse tangent, okay? Whichever you feel, you know, appropriate, you can use one of them to find your theta depending on which two quantities, if these two quantities are given, you can use sine inverse to find theta. If two, these two quantities are given, you can use cosine inverse to find theta. If these two quantities are given, you can use tangent inverse, inverse tangent to find theta, okay? So you can find theta in three different ways, depending on what quantities are given to you, okay? This is the inverse function. Let's do a problem here. Suppose you have a, this, this guy here, let's say this is the beach, right? This is ocean maybe, okay? It starts here and the boat is all the way here. How far is the boat? 14 meter away, okay? And how deep is the ocean at that point? 2.25 meter deep and your angle needs to be figured out. What is this angle? How do you figure out this angle, okay? So which two quantities are given? you are given this and these quantities. So sine, cosine, and tangent. Okay, what is tangent? O, A, right? Opposite over adjacent, right? So, so this is opposite, this is adjacent, right? So opposite over adjacent, they are given. So that's why you can use inverse tangent not these two, okay, inverse tangent, not inverse sine and inverse cosine. So you use the inverse tangent to figure out theta. So what is your H0? H0 is 2.25, okay, meter over what is your uh, adjacent? 14 meter, all right? So if you do the inverse tangent, you can say Google, find the inverse tangent of this in degrees, okay? So even, even Google does that, okay? So just, you can use calculator and find the inverse tangent. And if you do that, 
we end up getting 9.13 degrees. Okay, meaning this angle is 9.13 degree. Okay, that's the that's how you use your inverse trig function. Now we'll be talking about the Pythagorean theorem. In Pythagorean theorem, in trigonometry, there is one more theorem, which is Pythagorean theorem, right? So what is the Pythagorean theorem? So this, suppose this is your, this side is three meter long, this is four meter long, right? This is three meter. Again, this is right triangle, okay? It has to be right triangle though, right triangle. If it is right triangle, this is opposite, this is adjacent, this is hypotenuse, right? So there is a relationship between these three sides, which is this guy, GH square, equals this square plus this square. So if this is three, this is four, then what do you get? Three square plus four square is H square, right? Which is nine plus 16 equals h square, which is 25 equals h square. This means h should be two, five. These guys should be five. This theorem is called Pythagorean theorem, okay? All right. Let's uh, use this Pythagorean theorem. Uh, well, yeah, we might use it in the future, but not maybe not right now, but uh, Let's do a, uh, let's find the slope. So we need to find, uh, we need to learn how to find slope. Suppose you have a line passing through two points. These two points are given, okay? A line that passes through these two points. So this is what? This is a negative two, negative two. This is what? This is four, one. One, two, three, four, one, right? This is four, one. This is your four, one. This is, these are two points. So find the slope. What is the slope of this line passing through these two points, okay? All right, so you can call this is, these points, you can say X1, Y1, okay? You can say these two points X2, Y2. Makes sense? So how do you find the slope? You know the formula of the slope uh, is at y2 minus y1, x2 minus x1. So what is this? y2 is one, right? y2 is one minus, what is your y1? y1 is four, okay? What is your uh, x2? Did I make a mistake? Yeah, here. Uh, y2 minus y1, right? So y2 is one, uh, y1 is negative two. So minus, minus two, that's the thing. Then what is your x2? x2 is four. Then what is your um, x1? x1 is negative two, okay? That's how you do it. Then what do you get? One minus minus plus, one plus two. Then what is this guy? Four plus two, which is six, right? Three over two three over six, which is one over two. But instead you can consider this as x1, x2, y2, x2, y2, and this is x1, y1. It doesn't matter, you get the same answer. Okay, let's do that. If you do that, you get the same answer because the answer is one over two, you know that, right? So what is my, what is my y2? y2 is negative two, right? y2 is negative two here. What is my y1? y1 is one. What is my x2? x2 is negative two. Then what is my x1? Four. Look at that. You have negative three, negative six, which is one over two again. So you get the same answer either way, okay? The slope is uh, one over two. Now, if you know the slope of this line, can you find the equation of this uh, uh, of this uh, line. If you know the slope, right? What is the slope again? One over two, right? So then what is the equation of this, this straight line? Let's figure out the equation of this line here. So you know the equation of straight line is y equals mx plus b, right? 
So what is your M? M is given, uh, we just figured out one over two times X. What is your B? B is the uh, Y intercept when X equals zero. B equals, B is something, B is Y when X is zero. That's the definition of B. B is Y when X is zero. So what is X? This is X zero, right? When X is zero, what is your Y? This, one, negative one, right? This is negative one. So B is negative one, there, okay? So Y equals X over two minus one, this is your equation of motion, okay? So by the way, what is this Y? What is the name of this Y? This is called dependent variable. Dependent variable. What is the name of this X? Independent variable. All right, with this, I conclude this chapter. Thank you.